Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and today I want to talk about something that maybe you guys remember from when the reunion rumor started. So back in uh, 2015, late 2015, early 2016, there was a lot of people who took credit for the Guns N' Roses reunion or partial reunion. And I want to talk about those people today. So one of the first people to come out and claim at least partial credit was Aerosmith frontman Steven Tyler. He was on Howard Stern's show and Howard Stern brought up the topic. This was around the time that GNR announced Coachella in 2016. And here's what he had to say. Are you the guy responsible for getting Slash and Axel talking again and back into the band Guns N' Roses? Wow. Are you behind that or not? I'm sure I'm not solely, but right. I did meet Axel in a couple of clubs a year ago and two years ago and three years ago and I bump into him and I had that talk and <clears throat> you know he had his words what about, did you say to Axel I said you need to get the fucking back together again soon because every we all miss you same thing someone said to me when Joe and I were fighting you got to get back together. What are you crazy? In fact, it was John Bon Jovi. Right. I'm in rehab. Oh, is that right? He goes. He calls me up and goes. The fuck are you doing in rehab? The world needs you, dude. We're out here ripping it up, and everybody's asking for Aerosmith. John so Bon Jovi. People in the world need you. What the? You know. So I'd say to Axel, you got to get 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 together. There's a place in time where if you don't, you're going to miss it. That's yeah. right. In another four or five years, no one's going to even know who they were or care if they're on tour. And that's Steven Tyler's opinion. Right. So I, and also, I'm the lead singer of another great band. Right. So I, I have a right to feel that way. I, I have such a huge ego about keeping the fire and the music together because if we, if people come up to me and say, dude, I got laid to your music, or a woman comes up and say, we got married to your songs, that's, that's, you had something to do with the fabric of people. Guns N' Roses had something to do with the fabric of humans on this planet. Absolutely. So I yes. get fucking pissed. And I know, you know, you know. Slash, you know, you met, Slash did you meet him at the uh, birthday show? I him all the time. When you performed so uh, generously at my birthday show, mm -hmm. you did uh, a thing with Slash. Yeah. Was that the first time you guys met? No, no, no. no. I've done hundreds of things with him. Oh, you've known him. I love him to death. I call him all the time. I right. bust his chops, he busts mine. And Slash, I feel, really was really reasonable he would want yeah. to get together with the axel axel well, had a, do you understand why axel was pissed i get the whole thing what it, why was he i pissed? can't talk about it it's that personal yeah it's it, does it sound like an aerosmith kind of thing no it's a little deeper deeper ah. than that yeah it is somebody fuck somebody's wife no but 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 you know the point is is they're talking to each other they got an offer for something and at least they're going out i think pete the world needs to hear their music end of story do you think it will last or is it very volatile it's so, you've been in that position where it's so volatile between a band and especially contentious between i can, I can only hope right that axel sees that the greater picture is to not be angry at you know Duff or or Axel, yes, but but Ac uh, or, or or Slash, but Axel to understand that that he's a lead singer in a great band, and, right? And, he, and the world wants to see Axel with the original band. They love him alone too. He's the shit alone. He's fucking great. Can I ask you a question? Axel's great. Would you? So the next person to claim credit for a Guns N' Roses reunion, or at least partial credit, was comedian Andrew Dice Clay. So he was at the April 1st performance that Guns N' Roses did in 2016 at the Troubadour. And he told a magazine, which was Rolling Stone, that there was a lot of excitement in the room. I wanted to be at that first show because I honestly, I really don't know how to say this because I don't want to take credit for anything, but I was aggressively, I was aggressive in trying to get the band back together. So over the course of Clay's missive, he calls the band members friends and stated that they've bonded beautifully over the years and he's always had pure love for the guys in the band and their music. He explained that his son Max encouraged him to speak to the band members when possible, feeling that his relationship to the guys could be helpful in trying to get the band to reunite. He said every manager tried, every attorney tried, every agent tried, but the reason I got aggressive about it is because last year when Axel was still working with the new band, he was at the Hard Rock Hotel and I opened for him at the last show they did. That was a lot of fun, explains the comedian. He said he started speaking with Slash when they crossed paths in Australia. I said, all right, listen, whatever the problems were 20 years ago, whatever it might have been, we've got to put that to rest because you guys peaked rock and roll. You're all around and you're a great band. Recall Dice. And he was saying really good stuff about Axel, so that was a good sign to me. 
Dice then spoke to McKagan next when the bassist came to watch his son's band play. I go to Duff, all right, we've got to make this move because rock and roll is coming back in a bigger than life way. So the minute the TV show Vinyl, which was a short lived TV show, which only had one season on HBO hit, the rock explosion is gonna start. That's what uh, Dice said looking back. He said, there's another show called Roadies. All these bands are getting back together. You owe it to yourselves and all these millions of new fans from the last 20 years to go out there and kick their asses. So Dice also talked about Steven Tyler speaking publicly about having a role in igniting the reunion and something that he said he didn't doubt since he's buddies with the band, but he added that he felt he went aggressively towards band members in his talking of trying to convince them to reunite. And one of the most absurd claims in getting Guns N' Roses to reunite was done by Limp Bizkit frontman Fred Durst. So there was articles in September 2015 where he talked about having a good feeling that there would be a Guns N' Roses reunion between Axl Rose and Slash. So during a uh, concert that Guns N' Roses did, he did say to the audience, I'd like you to know that we're responsible for Axl and Slash being back together. Durst told the crowd at the Reading Festival, he said, we had a meeting and it went really well. And he also referenced uh, the Guns N' Roses hit Sweet Child of Mine. He said that their 2000 song, My Generation, also pays tribute to another Guns N' Roses classic, Welcome to the Jungle, which Limp Bizkit has been known to cover. So in January of 2016, Guns N' Roses would put out an actual statement in regards to all these rumors flying about who was responsible for reuniting the band. So Guns N' Roses said... Guns N' Roses would like to respectfully thank the many people taking credit for our upcoming shows and everything in between, especially those whom we haven't spoken to in numerous years who through the power of the media have somehow served a pivotal, even if non-existent role. We and the fans thank you. Hashtag GNFNR. Now you guys may remember that interview that was done about two years ago where Duff and Slash sat down with Brazilian TV and Axel revealed that a person named Paul Tillette was responsible for reuniting Guns N' Roses, or at least played a, played a pivotal role. Now, if you guys don't know who Paul Tillett is, he actually runs Golden Voice. He's the president of the company that founded Coachella in 1999. And he basically revealed that he went to Guns N' Roses in order to convince them to come play Coachella. He also revealed that he's been trying for quite a while and he said these types of things, it can't be done by one person. He said it has to be a lot of different people and a lot of different reasons it's happening. He also said that he never leads with money because it offends those artists. He said it can turn them off and the communications can stop. He said not because of the number, it's just because of the commerce in the first discussion. So he said talks with Guns N' Roses began in 2014. At some point along the way, he sent the group a vintage flyer of a 1986 performance he promoted for the band shortly before they hit it big time. He said these bands were getting bigger faster than Golden Voice was, so we couldn't hold on to them. Back then, the band would go platinum in a matter of months. It takes a company years to build up the skills, the money, and the clout, and the venues. There's so a lot. that does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know your comments down below in the comment section and be sure to hit the subscribe button if you love Guns N' Roses as much as I do. Alternatively, you guys can also go visit GNRcentral.com to stay up to date on the latest GNR news. It's updated multiple times daily. Take care.